Hello students today we are going to talk about the golden era of hindi cinema the 1930s and 40s were widely known for talking pictures which i have earlier referred as talkies and which have nationally flourished and then paved way for what we are going to discuss today that is golden era of hindi cinema As the popularity of hitherto established studios started to wane, uh, it paved the way for golden era of Hindi cinema. The audience appetite for silly and fantastic had more or less been satisfied, and rather the audiences were looking for more humane narratives. By then, socials had already seen its fair share. Again, as we have discussed in the previous episode. with franz austen achut kanya and gyan mukherjee's kismat both by bombay talkies studio led content were becoming garish and questionable and educated middle class uh, were sort of leaning away from them this led eventually to the demise of the studio era and uh, paved way for the golden era of hindi cinema that is during the 1950s The first decade of film production after India's independence from the British Raj saw a number of filmmakers emerge wanting to tell stories which were different that is wanting to tell stories about people their lives their relationship with each other and their emotional pathos and in in today's episode we are going to discuss two important filmmakers of post independence hindi cinema that is raj kapoor and gurudat raj kapoor born as ranbir raj kapoor was one of the three superstars of 1950 along with two other superstars dilip kumar and devanand and these three together were the most prominent figures in what is agreed to be as the golden decade of hindi cinema now raj kapoor was unique because he was a director as well as a producer and as we all know obviously he was an actor himself his studio rk films was both an achievement and a burden Now the reason I'm saying it was a burden because it had put a huge amount of financial burden on Raj Kapoor. In fact, when a film flopped like a film called Ah in 1953, for example, it was Raj Kapoor who had to actually work double time in order to um, uh, double time and also work in in sort of dubious films like Kanhaiya, Do Ustad to make up for the losses uh, of of the film Ah. Dilip Kumar by contrast could afford to be much more choosier. In fact, he was actually doing one film at a time. That is in the 1950s. The other star which I mentioned that is Devanand had had his brother's studio's Navketan which he later made his own. But Navketan films unlike RK films did not put any sort of financial burden on uh, Devanand. Now Raj Kapoor was trained as an actor in theaters uh, in in the theater by his father Prithvi Raj Kapoor who ran Prithvi Theaters for many years out of the Royal Opera House in Mumbai Raj Kapoor was best known for his Chaplin's Q Raju a character who became a sort of of every man's orphan or tramp from the early beginnings in avara in 1951 where the character is not yet fully fledged he sort of uh, explored the indianization of the, the figure of chaplin by the time he made shri char sobis that is 1955 raju was fully fledged he then made jis desh mein ganga behti hai in 1960 in which raju was a well known image and finally the film mera naam jogar joker which uh, uh, finally was a sort of uh, of uh, a disastrous apotheosis for raju 
<laughs> Some of the other films which his studio made were films like Boot Polish, which was one of the two R K films uh, nominated for Cannes, and the obviously the other being Avara. After Mera Naam Joker flopped, and yes, it flopped. Though it was a critically acclaimed film, uh, in financially it flopped. He made Kal Aaj Kal in 1971, by which he launched his son Randhir Kapoor, and finally Bobby in 1973, a very different sort of film in which he cast his other son Rishi, that is Rishi Kapoor, in the lead. Bobby was an instant hit. and it was sort of bobby which rescued rk films he then went on to make films like satyam shivam sundaram and ram teri ganga meli now let's talk some of the unique feature of raj kapoor films raj kapoor was actually one of the very few indian filmmakers who were who was extremely hit even in the overseas market namely in ussr and other parts of the eastern european countries he was also known for shooting sequences that is film sequences abroad in fact he is the one who started the practice for example in a film sangam he shot in london rome geneva paris and switzerland also in his films like satyam uh, shivam sundaram and ram teri ganga meli he aesthetically explored the limits to which the female form could be exposed in indian films and this was also something very new for indian audiences almost all of raj kapoor films can be read from the viewpoint of nation and state let's take the song for example मेरा जूता है जापानी ये पतलून इंग्लिस्तानी सर पे लाल टोपी रूसी फिर भी दिल है हिंदुस्तानी स्पीक्स वॉल्यूम अबाउट कपूर्स आइडियाज और आइडियल्स फॉर द लव फॉर हिज कंट्री सो मच सो दैट ही ऑलमोस्ट वेंट ऑन टू कंस्ट्रक्ट दिस आइडिया ऑफ इमेजिंड नेशन दिस कॉम्बिनेशन along with his immaculate portrayal of women in his films as i have already discussed earlier made this sort of imagined nation something that is a place worth yearning for now once again when i'm talking about nation and state in raj kapoor films please keep the following films in your mind now in mera naam joker for example let's take the example of mera naam joker Raju falls in love with this trapeze artist called Marina and in fact she was a trapeze artist from Russia in doing so he brings together a sort of the pathos of the separation as well as unity of the two countries all this while playfully disseminating also disseminating the idea of nation and what it stands for through their romantic relationship now this sort of idea of imagined nation coupled with the romance is perhaps best witnessed in kapoor's final film that is heena which is among the first popular film to openly acknowledge the birth of the two nation from one that is i'm talking about india and pakistan now let's discuss one particular film avara 1951 Avara was in fact the first film that established Raj Kapoor as a major international film star. It also became one of the most popular Hindi cinema in the overseas market, mainly in Asia and former USSR. It was also remade in many other national cinemas. It is also the first film where Raj it was it was also the first film where Raj Kapoor made in his own studio with his own team. क्या आप बता सकते हैं कि आपने कब और क्यों और किस हालत में अपनी बीवी को घर से निकाला था? ये ना बेवाला क्या मुझे इन बेकार सवालों के जवाब देने के लिए मजबूर किया जाएगा? This was the first film in which Raj Kapoor appeared as the chaplain is Q Raju. Now. Unlike the usual Indian vagrant, Raj Kapoor is dressed as an American tramp, very similar to the clothes of Charlie Chaplin. 
Now, if you remember Charlie Chaplin's famous oversized suit that appears and that reminds of the circus clown. Now, in Raj Kapoor's case, interestingly, the suit was rather too small and tight, suggesting that perhaps that he had outgrown what used to be uh, what used to fit him. The western or the colonial nature of the suit may also suggest that, an, uh, that it's sort of an outfit which is discarded by a member of the ruling state and is sort of comically appropriated by a vagrant. Raj Kapoor fans will be delighted to know that RK Studio has very carefully preserved the outfit, the shoes and the famous hat in the wardrobe department uh, of RK Films situated in Bombay. Now, for despite the film's reference to myth mythology, that is uh, the abandonment of Sita by Rama, Lord Rama uh, in Ramayan, now, this film was very, very modern in nature. So, even though there are obviously references to the mythology, yet the nature of the film was very modern. The, the reason I'm saying the film is modern is because it argues that nurture rather than nature creates a person's moral character. So, it was not, the, it was not basically birth but the upbringing which kind of creates a person's moral character. Now we are going to discuss another filmmaker, my favorite, Gurudath. Gurudath, that is Gurudath Padukone, was born in Mysore in 1925. He had his early education in Calcutta, after which he joined uh, the dance maestro Uday Shankar. He in fact joined Prabhat studio as a choreographer and it is here in Prabhat where he became good friends with Devanand. From Prabhat, Gurudat moved to famous studios and then to Bombay talkies. Meanwhile, his close friend from Prabhat, that is Devanand, has launched his own banner, which originally obviously belonged to his brother, that is the Navketan studio. It is Devanand himself who initiated Gurudath to direct a film for him. Now, this relationship between Devanand and Gurudath started with the film Bazi which was the first film, that is Gurudath's first film, as a director under the banner of Navketan. Bazi was an immediate success. Gurudath followed this with two more films, Jal and Baz. However, both Jal and Baz did not receive commercial success. Even though it did not receive commercial success, these films sort of brought together Gurudath's team, which remained with him for all his subsequent films. This team includes Johnny Walker, that is the comedian, VK Murthy, cinematographer, Abrar Alvi, that is writer-director Abrar Alvi, and finally, the actress introduced by Gurudath into Hindi cinema, that is Vahida Rahman. Let us talk about his films one by one. In 1954, he made the film R. Par. He followed this with another film, in 1955, that is Mr. and Mrs. 55. Now, both the films uh, belong to the genre of comedy. However, after R. Par and Mr. and Mrs. 55, he sort of moved uh, into filming tragedy with his film, that is the famous film Piasa in 1957. Another film, 1959, Kagas Ke Fool. Now, Kagas Ke Fool is a very important film because the film was unique as it was very much autobiographical in nature. However, Kagas Ke Fool, in spite of being a remarkable film, was of intense commercial disappointment. In fact, it was this film where Gurudath had invested a great deal of love, money and energy, 
which was almost a sort of self-absorbed tale of the famous director, played by Gurudath himself, almost in a very, very, as I discussed, in an autobiographical nature, who falls in, in love with an actress that is outside his marriage. Interestingly, the actress was played by none other Vahid than Vahid, Vahida Rehman. Kagas ke Fool failed at box office and that was devastated. Other directors thereafter officially helmed all subsequent films from his studio since Gurudath felt that it was his name which was a sort of anathema to the box office success. Later films like, like Sahib Bibi Gulam and Chaudhvi Ka Chand were not officially directed by him. Sai Bibi Gulam was directed by his writer Rabra Ralvi and Gurudath uh, and Chaudhvika Chand was actually directed by M. Sadik. However, it cannot be denied that Gurudath had a huge role to play in both the films that is Sai Bibi Gulam and Chaudhvika Chand. During the making of the hugely successful Bazi, Gurudath was married to Geeta Dath. However, the marriage was not a very successful one. After the separation, Geeta Dath took away their three children from Gurudat, and thereafter Gurudat led a very lonely life. It has been over 50 years since Gurudat committed suicide. That is on October 10th, 1964. That is at the mere age of 39. However, with each passing year, his reputation as the popular Hindi cinema's finest director has grown from strength to strength, in country after country. One has to also mention his cinematographer V.K. Murthy. He was the first Indian cinematographer to shoot in cinemascope. That's Kagas Ke Fool was in fact India's first cinemascope film. An excellent cinematographer, his lighting techniques in Pyasa, Kagas Ke Fool, Sahib Bibi Gulam were remarkable. Now let us discuss some of the narrative strategies in Dutt's film. Becoming his own producer-director in 1950s, uh, Guru Dutt sort of distant himself or, or dissociated himself from the cliche-ridden, escapist, idealistic, melodramatic narratives. His films were very strongly social in nature. However, it is interesting that the only film where Gurudath actually takes a, a moral stance was actually a very regressive one. The satire of Mr. and Mrs. 55 was a comment on the new divorce law passed that year. The film endorses the idea that the ultimate place of a woman is uh, at the feet of the husband. Now, this idea was obviously a very, very regressive idea. Apart from this particular film, the subjects of Gurudath films were largely non-judgmental. He was magnetically drawn towards exploring flawed characters one that floated between black and white ends of the spectrum. Interestingly, Kagas Ke Fool was a self-portrait. Gurudath never adapted, apart from the exception of Sahib Bibi Gulam, based on a Bengali novel by Bimal Mitro, and Chaudhavi Ka Chand, both, of, both the films were actually not directly directed by Gurudath, we may say ghost directed, but apart from these two films, he never... Uh, adapted for any of his films. Another interesting fact to note is R. Par and Mr. and Mrs. 55 were the only comedies and then he quickly shifted to Pyasa, Kagas Ke Fool and Sahib Bibi Gulam which uh, rather can be called as the tragic trilogies. Next, the city or the landscape played a very significant role in that melodrama. For example, remember the Lalaji's garage which has become the home and the space for the erotic encounter in the film R. Par. The benches of the city park in Mr. and Mrs. 55 and the studio in case of Kagas Ke Fool. Also note when you watch the, the films of Guruda, the rich text of metaphor. For example, the metaphor of cross in Pyasa. 
Similarly, the metaphor of sweater in Kagas Ke Phool. Let's talk about a little bit about characterization. All the characters in Dutt's film were in, were in the constant pursuit of modernity. For example, Kalu wanting to learn English during his off time. Or Bhutnath wearing English shoes along with his traditional dhoti kurta. Or the Brahmo Samaj followed by Joba and her father. In Dutt's film, even the minor character were always fleshed out. Characters like Kumkum and Tuntun, who spoke with a language that reflected their background, became extremely popular in Gurudat films. Also, these characters, all of these characters, were very much rooted in their character. The hero from Madhya Pradesh in central India also spoke in a particular style. The garage owner, a Punjabi, spoke with a Punjabi slang. In addition to the lead character, it, is, it can be also noted that Gurudat created some of the most memorable supporting roles. And here, I am obviously talking about the artist, Johnny Walker. Also, the characters in his films were either black and white. For example, his brothers in the film Pyasa, that is, the brothers of the character Vijay in the film Pyasa were portrayed as relentlessly black. Uh, similarly, in Kagas Ke Fool, the wife was given no voice at all. To sum up, what I mean to say is that characterization can be said an area in which Gurudat attempted to break the moulds, displayed sparks of genius and created many, many memorable characters. But at the end, I would argue that he could not carry it to the depth that could truly bracket his work as path-breaking. <music> Having written this episode, it is made apparent how both Raj Kapoor and Gurudat belonging in the same generation made use of their own set of aesthetics and rose to success. It is hardly arguable how influential their body of work has been and how big their own legacy has become.